So the story is we I went I went to their place and she inherited she inherited uh, all this these beautiful gems and jewels and stuff from uh, her ancestors in, in Russia. And then within a few days, she put it on right, right away. And, uh, and and then she started manifesting. She got sick and she, then her fingers pain in her bones and woke up in the morning. Her fingers are crippling arthritis. Her toes are starting, not full blown like her grandmother that passed away, but part of, it was starting to manifest. If, if she had it on for another week, she probably looked like a 70 year old woman, 80 year old woman. Cause her grandmother died like 90 something years old with horrible crippling arthritis pain and so we he called me up i went there i prayed and it was a battle like i said earlier she she's a big russian girl and she had the strength like two three men we couldn't hold her i mean it, we, she would fight back hit back throw us back you know and i was i was a healthy big young dude then you know I was still lifting weights and stuff and going to the gym. And so, and I said, Father, what should I do in my brain? And then he says, start worshiping, bring Shalom in this room. And then I'm going to have you talk to the girl. And we're going to, we're going to pierce through the spirit that's possessed her from the family looms and the familiar generation curse. Because according to the, her, it, it went back seven generations, this jewelry. It was like they didn't even want to release it in a package to go under security courier to the United States because it's Russian family loom, the jewelry, the art. You know what I mean? It's, it could have been in a museum, some of the jewelry. And so, but according to the death wishes of her great-grandmother, um, according to the wishes it, it had a pass because she wouldn't even give it to her mother or I mean her daughters. She wanted it to go to her grandbaby. And so it was passed to the net, to the, the lower end because she was her favorite when she was a baby. So when the spirit manifests, it's in no, their mind, you don't take them in a man's voice with a cryptid uh, gurgling sound from her voice. Well, we know she was possessed by the strength and by the look in her face, her color was changed, her eyes. So when we started worshiping, and, and, and now we're going on two or three hours now already, and we're worshiping, and I'm standing there speaking the word, and the demons mocking. Of course, we didn't, we were not practicing 100% the right names and words then. You know, we're in transition then. So, Finally, we're able to talk to her to get her to take it off. We took the guy, we're able to get the earrings out. We we're able to get the necklace off. That was the first thing that fell out. And then, um, and then the box, we, we put him in the, that jewelry box. There was a safe box. And then we, he hit it and then he came back. And now we've got to work on that ring. You know, I mean, it was actually two rings together. And, uh, like a wedding ring and wedding band or whatever engagement ring. So finally we got her to talk to us. And I said, you must sister, look at your babies, look at your children for your children's sake. Look at your fingers, look at, and every once in a while the demon would manifest. No, I'm fine. She's fine. She's mine. You know, blah, blah, blah. This is family business. Get out of here. You, you leave this house telling me, you know, and so, but he knew already, and one of the cousins came to help us, another man, uh, a, a neighbor, a Christian neighbor. He couldn't handle it very long, the Christian neighbor. He had to leave, got scared. And so, when it ended up happening, we, once she got the rings off and we placed it on the table, the husband grabbed him and ran out the door and she, she jerked and then got up to chase him. No, I want him back on. And he, and we grabbed and held her and she wasn't as strong no more. Cause what happened, the spirit like came out of her body was in between the rings and her, the demons, 
the familiar generation curse, was between her and the body of her body and the ring. And he ran out the door with him because he has to be familiar with something to attach himself to the next person. So he runs out the door to leave the complex because he lived in a four-story luxury uh, apartments in Marina del Rey. And so he, we held her and we were able to hold her till he disappeared and got away. And then, uh, and then we sat her down and prayed for her. And then the knuckles started going back to normal. Her knuckles started going back to normal. She had like slippers on. You could see the toes and the, and the, the bones of the toes starting to go back to normal. It took like 30 minutes. You know, I mean, it wasn't no quick thing. And everything started. And then she come back to her senses. And she was like, I'm so exhausted. What happened to me? I blacked out. Where's my rings? Where's my necklaces? Where She didn't even know. She was completely blacked out. She didn't even know. And he, uh, he took him to his car and, and he was fighting him. He kept hearing voices. You don't touch, hurt nothing. You, you give it back to her. It belongs to her. This is illegal. He kept hearing in his mind, this is a legal document passed to the air. You stole it from her. You're going to go to jail. The demon was just totally playing with his brain. And he went and got a hammer from the, tr the back end of his truck toolbox and he placed it on the concrete floor and when he hit it it would not break he hit it and he hit it and the concrete was breaking the gem and the the gold of, and uh, of the jewelry was like not scratched <laughs> you know what i mean and then he called me on the phone i said go take it through the fire he says, okay, so he, he made a little fire. This is he, he, She's not around. She's upstairs, and he's out in the lower, lower end of a, a subterranean parking lot of the apartment. And he went to the back area and found a spot, a, a trash can. And back then, we had metal cans back in those days. And he made a little fire, and he put it through the fire. And uh, when we were upstairs... That's when she started screaming. And we didn't know at the same time he put it through the fire. She started screaming and howling. I'm hot. I'm burning. And blah, blah, blah. So it, the, the spirit broke. The generation curse broke. The air heirloom broke from passing to the next generation. Okay. So then he then the next day, he hid it from her. And the next day, she wants to her stuff. So he said, what do I do? I said, well, what you're going to have to do is the gems have to be taken out and passed to the fire. The gold and silver has to be taken and melted to, to the fire in order for generation curses not to pass. So what he did, he, he did that. He went, to a, he went to a jeweler and they separated it. And they separated and says, I want this melted down. They said, what are you talking about? This is ancient art. This is this is Russian. I could tell by the cut of the of the, of the metal. You know, I said, no, you, you just listen to what I'm saying. So they did it for him. And then he took the gems and he put it through the fire, which, you know, gems and diamonds and stuff, they can handle the fire. But he took it through the fire. And then they cleaned it up, put it all back together, and she got it back. And nothing ever happened to her again. No manifestations of a generation curse. So getting back to Sister Alicia, which her name is Elijah, Elisha, the second heir of Eliyahu. Because, you know, in the, in the Christian King James Bible, you got Elijah and Elisha, right? Well, in Israel, Elisha, the second, he's really pronounced Elisha. Now, with a J, with an S, Elisha. And if a girl took the name, she's Elisha. All right? So what they did Latinized, they put an A instead of an E, and they took a C instead of an S to hide the Hebrew name in Latin. But it's still Elisha. Okay? And then Elijah, that, my like my name, is Eliyahu. 
But the other guy was uh, Elisha, Elisha. And if it had the Aleph on Lamet sound, it would be Ali, just like my name, Ali Yahu. It would be Alisha, Alisha, masculine, Elisha, feminine. So it's just a phonetic up and down, like in Spanish. So that was her name. And the family didn't know it. And they said, well, she was a zealous. She really took the mantle and ran, you know. But it's amazing that when we stood over her bed and cast the spirit of infirmity out of her body, that he will not go into the next generation of the sons and their children or or relatives around them. Brothers and sisters were coming. You know what I mean? The Chikers would like to go into that too and go into those grandchildren. So we did an all around prayer and then we asked the father to have a messenger, my messenger and their, her messengers, bind them up, bag them up and escort it to the wilderness and take it to the place it belongs. Because we don't really know. Only the father knows where they belong. You know, in the pit, in the dry places, or you know what I mean? Only the Father knows was it actually. And, and and when you give the charge to your messengers to do it, they will obey the Father and the Ruach to do this, to take it to the place they, they need to go. Okay. So in Christianity, they teach a little different. I bind you and take you to the pits of hell and all that. They, they do these exaggerate we used to all do it you know what i mean it was exaggerate prayer but according to the scriptures there's nowhere to do that it doesn't say that you know what i mean I, they you know Ushua cast it out and it said it went into the dry places you know or when the pigs came out of the uh, the demons came out of the pig it said he went into the dry places you know the desolate desert places and so um and wandered around you know, they give them a little territory to wander around. They can't leave the territory. So, uh, and when we, we when we broke the infirmities of cancer and arthritis and anything else we don't know about from her body, and then in 24 hours, she was still alive. It was a few hours before she gave it up. She died, She passed, and I think, at three in, between 3 and 4 in the morning, uh, Shabbat morning. And then, but... Um, so I was I, I visited her in the evening, like it, I left her house at 10 or 11 with the family. And they all started to go to sleep when some of us left, thinking she was going to sleep and make it through another night. You know what I mean? And uh, but before that, of course, we cast that spirit out of Verbity and then her fingers and the knuckles and the toe went back to normal bone. And then the father gave the word to Carrie Smith, the, the one that was standing in the middle. She, she, uh, she got a word. She said, Eliyahu, I got a word from the father. I'm taking my daughter without uh, demonic infirmities of cancer and arthritis. It's not in her no more. So she's dying right now, not of an infirmity. She's going because the father's taking her allowing her to go and that's when the nurses came and they did a little bit of work to, you know clean up and taking her vitals and everything and they were shocked all her vitals are normal she it, it seems with her vitals the way they are she can just step out of the bed but yet she wasn't she was lying there still but all her vitals her blood pressure her, you know her breathing and the oxygen to the lung, everything was normal and they said it was like, uh, and they did it the day before. They were taking it like every 12 hours or 10 hours, depending on the shift coming in. And so we know it was after the prayer that her vitals changed. And we know it was after the prayer that her fingers went to normal. But but we, we accepted the word that came to Sister Carrie that she passed without infirmity. And, uh, and we casted them out of the house so they won't hitchhike to other members of the family. So uh, does anybody else have any input of something similar or any uh, understanding of what we experienced this week, of what I was sharing with you about the generation curses, loved ones leaving, how to protect them, how to pray for them? Now, this, this is new to me. I've never witnessed this before. 
where within hours her fingers go to normal. You know what I mean? This is like, this is a newbie for me, you know, to witness this. And to hear the father through Sister Carrie say to her, her inner witness that she's going without infirmity. It gives us confidence and insurance, you know, in whatever situation. My wife and I, we got this little funny thing we say. If we're on a plane or we're in a car or we're in bed sleeping, we're going together. <laughs> I, I, I do part-time Uber and Lyft. You know, that's what I do. You know, I, I like it. Of course, I clean my car very thorough. And um, I clean my car very thorough. And, uh, and I pick up people and take them to the airport. I picked up a guy. Uh, from the Marriott, and he was a businessman coming down here. He sells medical supplies, and he uh, got in the car and he says, "Do I have to put a mask on?" He said, "No, you you don't need to put a mask on. You're fine. You're in Texas, man." He said, "Oh, great, man. Yeah, I'm in Florida, man. Where Florida and Texas are great, you know." He says, um, uh, "You don't. Do you have to wear a mask?" I said, "Well, I have to because in our cell phones." Because Uber is Chicago and Lyft is San Francisco. Okay. Two FEMA camps. <laughs> Headquarters. You know, because they, they, they try to text me and say, you got to get your shot and show proof. And I, I text them back, pound sand and I'll quit. Just don't like that. Pound sand and I'll quit. And I sent them a, I sent them a, clip, a clip of our governor saying, if any company in Texas or is, comes to, from a branch to Texas, like, you know, you're the headquarters in another state and they they have a branch here and you fire, you're going to get a $1.4 million suit. Any company that fires anybody in Texas for not taking the shot. So I sent it to Uber. <laughs> they never contacted me back or nothing. <laughs> they left me alone. <laughs> now, my buddy in California who does Uber they they said you have 30 days you have two weeks you have one week to get the shot or you're not going to drive and he told them to pound sand too and so, so they 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 didn't he, he would turn his uber on and nothing for almost three and a half weeks to a month nothing they would not give him a hit then he said one night it got it got a, he got a text please go out and drive you are free to drive now. We have special clients that need to go from the military base to the airport and blah, blah, Because he do, he do long runs. I mean, he can work four hours and make five, six hundred dollars, no problem. But he, he'll pick up men from the air base going to airports or going to Nevada or picked up from Las Vegas and going back to Joshua Street or Rongo Valley. Long run. It's a long drive. A lot of money. And so... They hired him back, and then he texted them and said, well, what's going on, man? And they said, well, we're short of drivers. We have no drivers. Well, we told all the drivers that they got to get a shot. They all quit. <laughs> so getting back, getting back to this guy, he tells me, he said, did you get COVID? I said, well, I got it the first month before there was a, even a word about a shot, before there was any mask on a face or any separation. You know, I got sick. I was, I told him my symptoms and, and I said, look, at, let's face it. I had, I had Corona too back in 1964. I had Corona, whatever it was, SARS, Sears. Uh, back in 1976, then I had Merck, which is the Mediterranean uh, Corona, you know what I mean, back in the 80s and 90s. So I said, man, I, I've got immunity. I got immunity, man. So I'm good, you know. Yeah, it's a bump of the road to me now. It's a sneeze. You know, I told him, it's a sneeze. I don't, I don't need a shot. And so he said, I wish today I never took it. The first time it came out, they told me that, that I couldn't go to other states to do sales at the hospitals unless I got the shot. So I took this shot 
And I haven't took no more because I start after the shot, I started reading and realizing there's no insert. It has some other stuff in it. What did I do? And he forbid his wife and his children. They will not get the shot. He says, if I have to sacrifice and I get sick and something happens, fine. But I'm not going to let my children and family take the shot. And I said, well, why do you regret it? He says, my brain is like a jello now. A year later. I have to triple think the math I used to do in seconds to do numbers, crush numbers, to do sales on medical supplies and equipment, things like that. If I didn't do it so many years, he said, I would have not have that auto uh, auto understanding, you know, automatic understanding because he'd been doing it for years. But I'm forgetting numbers. I'm forgetting labels. I'm forgetting brands. I'm, I have to relook at paper. And this is so a dark a friend of a doctor told me him, and he started doing it and he gave some to me and he's taking a pill that's prescribed for people that has Alzheimer's to help their mind and their movement and their modems, you know, their mobility function good until they get really bad and they're hospitalized. So he's taking a little bit under the table medication just to function, he said, right? He said, but I, I wish I'd never took it. And I said, are you a, a believer of the creator most high? He said, very little, but I pray and ask the, whoever he is to forgive me. Yeah, this is a stranger in the back seat of my car. Yeah. And then uh, uh, the next day I picked up another one. Same thing. I wish I never took it. I wish I never took it. Because they asked me, one, one person asked me, why did you take so long? I saw your car down the street just sitting still on the on the app, on the, you know, their little GPS tracking. It doesn't work that great. It works like spotty, you know, jerks, like quarter mile jerks. And I said, because I pull over, I go through the back seat, I make sure nobody left something for the next customer, and I clean it with anti, I put saw anti-COVID, uh, uh, what they call, they, Uber gives us a spray that you can spray on the handles and everything kills all the germs and viruses and plagues and whatever, you know. It's all fault, fake it till they make it anyways. So, and then I look at the formula, what they give us, it's almost like green you could buy at Walmart. You know, I have that green spray. <laughs> But they branded it this super cleaner for COVID, you know, it's, it's, it's just green. So they put a different bottle on it. <laughs> so they give it to us free. So I use it. Matter of fact, it cleans the rims real good, man. I spray it on my rims. My rims, my rims polish up good. Man. <laughs> it's some kind of, uh, it's some kind of antibacteria spray. You spray on the handles, everything they could touch in your car so they can't pass it to the next person. They can't pass it anyways. You know, if, if there's a 30 minute, 10 minute, five minute, or the temperature's over 76 or something like that degrees. So, but I, you know, I do it. I do it. I do it just to be obedient to the system I work for. And, uh, but it looks like green, you know, that green, clean, everything green in the, but it's amazing to hear a stranger tell you and pour their heart out. I wish I never took it, man. I haven't been right since. I said, oh, man. If I had more time, I'll work on them. You know, I give them the word and stuff, and I'm dropping them off. I'm right there by the airport. He's dropping off. They get a phone call. It breaks the conversation, you know. And I said, well, go research more. Keep it in prayer and don't get no other shots and boosters. He says, uh, you better believe I'm not. Yeah, no way I'm going to do it, you know. So I'm sure they won't tell their company that, but they told me that. And, you know, you know, you know, when people say they're they're agnostic or atheist, there's still an opportunity to talk to them. Because, you, you know, we we have a testimony that led us to the Savior in the way we believe. But they have a testimony, too. So I would say. I, I've told one atheist, I said, look at, I know, I know Darwin's testimony, how you, 
left church and became the father of Darwinism. But what's your testimony? And it really freaks them out when you ask them that question. What's your testimony? Everybody has a testimony. You have a testimony going through college and becoming a rocket scientist to uh, whatever you are or, or an evolutionist or an agnostic. What's your testimony? And they kind of like look at you and say, well, well, wait a minute. I guess I do have a story. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so why do you brush somebody else off that has a story too? You know, but if they still talk, because not a lot of times they'll talk. You know, well, that's my business. I don't want to talk about it. You know, they have, you know, they have a hardship experience with some form of a denomination Christianity that turned them off. You know what I mean? And uh, very few you'll find agnostics and evolutionists that are like uh, Bill Gates. His father was and passed it to him. You follow what I'm saying? Bill Gates' parents were, they made him the way he is because they were that way, you know what I mean? And they were not spiritual people. So, uh, and, and, and you know, they're actually protecting you though. <laughs> they're, actually, they're actually protecting you. You know what I mean? Because they're sporing. They're, they're, they're soothing out protein spells. I just saw, uh, oh, no, there was a girl. Oh, that's right. There was a sister in, in, in the Ahua that said her daughter was at her eighth month, one week, and, the, and, she, and the, she started having contractions, right? And uh, she, um, the daughter, uh, something about the baby born with the bag. And, uh, and she was starting to feel sick because uh, some members of her family came to see her and they, were, they had two vaccines and they came to visit her and she believes that they were sporing out. You know, they were, she con got a little contact you know what I mean? She never got the shot because she's pregnant. And um, so, uh, and then there's other things going on around, rumors going on that, um, that uh, uh, girls that are pregnant are either miscarrying or the baby's premature or, and they didn't get the shot. They're just around people that have. You, you follow what I'm saying? So they're protecting you. <laughs> the father's allowing the, the He's protecting you from the from the spores. You know, like that movie. Remember that that alien movie? They spore. They sport out. There was an alien. I remember what was the name of that movie where they they if you go to sleep. Uh, the aliens would put a spore right beside your where you're sleeping, and it would transfer a, their the consciousness of the alien into your body while you slept, and you would wake up, you're dead, and then the body your body, body snatchers was it called body snatchers or something like that? Was that it? And they had the spores. You, the, they would practice how to walk like them, and, and walk a certain z zombie walk. No, no, no person. They'll talk and talk to each other, but very no character, no personality, very zombie. And uh, and, and and to get around, you would the people with the normal people that would walk around, uh, and 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 they will spot each other that they're not they're not already an alien. But when the alien found out that you're not you're you're not one of them, they would oh, they would point their finger. To rat on you, and they open their mouth, and an old ugly screeching sound used to come out of them. Remember? They all point and they ah, and open their mouth and they rat on you, man, and in order to, to get you and take you somewhere to put you to sleep, you know, for you could be converted. <laughs> it's all, you know, it's almost like that, you know. I mean, <laughs> you're in a bad state. They want to rat on you, you know. <laughs> no mask. <laughs> like that guy did a video. Uh, going to Florida, Texas, 
He went to Starbucks. He went to Chili's restaurant. He went to different restaurants. Then he goes to Florida and he goes to different restaurants. And then he's in California, right? He's in California, I think, or, or San Francisco. And he walks into Starbucks and everybody, get out of here. Get out of here. You don't got a mask and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and so, and he's, and then he, then he shows, well, here's a Florida Starbucks and there's, everything's normal. Everything's fine. Some people with masks, some people without. And Texas, same thing, you know. And then he goes back to San Francisco restaurant. And same restaurant, but <laughs> different character of attitude of people, you know. 